glory to God in the highest. Oh, wow. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God omnipotent reign. Hallelujah. There's no doubt about it. Let us pray. Father God, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father God, everything about this service, everything about us, Father God, is for you. We lay everything at your feet this morning, God. Father God, for we know you are our life source. And Father God, we ask you now that the Holy Ghost rule and abide and control this place. Father God, it's all oh, you have free reign with no disturbances, no demonic distractions at all. Father, have your way, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we give the Lord a great shout, a shout of triumph, a shout of victory. Hallelujah. I first would like to welcome and thank everyone for being here today. It's such a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. We also want to thank our viewing audience around the world and say welcome. Many blessings to you also in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord had a message for me to give to you because of these critical times that we are living. How many know that it's critical times and we have to get down to business with God and stay down to business with God? Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, we are living in a time that your very life depends on hearing from the Lord. And the conversation and dialogue you have with the Lord. Amen? Your life depends on what's coming out in your intimate time and prayer talk with the Lord. Amen? Because divine instructions are going to be given during that intimate time. And only the Lord knows what the Spirit of the Lord knows. We can't have nobody else give us advice. Only God knows. Amen? Hallelujah. And hearing from the Lord only, the Spirit of the Lord told me to tell you today with absolute clarity that you must pray, pray, and pray again. He told me to tell you with absolute clarity. It's not ambiguous. It's not vague. It's not double-mindedness. We must pray, pray, pray. We're in a time of season that the Lord is requiring his soldiers to come forward and pray. Hallelujah. This is not a suggestion. It's not optional. We must pray and pray and pray again. Oh, God, for the things that are on the earth already, why is the Spirit of the Lord wanting us and strongly urging us to come into a position of prayer. Why is he strongly urging us to get into our positions of prayer and pray consistently? Amen? Because he already knows that the thing that the devil and the prince of the air is doing in the atmosphere and all around the world today, that your prayers must go higher to supersede, to intervene, and to cancel out the assignment of the enemy so you can make a greater impact. Say we're people of impact. Say our prayers must exceed what the devil is doing to make a greater impact. Amen. So he is putting you in a position of prayer. And guess what else he told me? And I was like, wow, this is your remaining position until he comes and snatch you out of here. You will never be able to get out of this position of prayer. This is your permanent position until he comes and take you home. Say, I'm a prayer warrior. I'm a prayer where I love to pray. I was made to pray. Do you know that prayer is the spiritual breathing? We teach that here. You can't be alive naturally and walk around the earth and not breathe, right? So spiritually, you must pray, because if not, you will become dead spiritually. Amen. So prayer is our breathing from God. And Jesus is coming back to see a house of prayer. 
Remember when he threw the money changers out of the temple. He said, it shall be said that my father's house should be a house of prayer. So we must be one accord on prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This house is a house of prayer. Our individual home is a house of prayer. Your temple itself is a house of prayer. Amen. We can pray anytime to the Lord at any given place and he will hear us. He knows that darkness. Is it dark out there? Growth darkness, the Bible says, is upon the earth. A darkness that's never been seen before and ever will be. So he needs us in our prayer position to overtake and to counteract this work of darkness. Amen? So he's looking for what? You, the children of light, that he shines the light upon their face. That has the power of the Holy Ghost within them to go against the works of darkness. And you shall shine and you shall strike the devil's operations. Listen, this is what he says too. If we think about this realistically, the devil has launched a full attack on humanity, human beings, because we're made in the image of God. And he has no intention of letting up. He's trying and not have any intention of slowing down. The devil has abused and tormented and killed so many people that only the Lord truly knows the count and number of the lives he had destroyed. So this is a reason for prayer. He tortured, abused, and he's killing so many people. Hallelujah. So remember, with the kingdom of God suffereth violence. And the violent is going to take it by force. Say, God, I am the violent you're looking for. I am the violent you are looking for. Amen. Like Nehemiah, we must save and fight. We must fight for ourselves. We must fight for our brethren. We must fight for the defenseless. We must de fight for the Christian people all over the world. As you know, to stay strong spiritually, we must have three factors. We must read our Bible, we must pray, and we must fast. I, my message will be dealing on the second factor, prayer. The title of our message is The Breath of Life. We know that the Lord is our life source. Again, the breath of life. Hallelujah. The first thing we need to do is to stay with the source and the breath of life. If you would, would you turn with me to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Hallelujah. We have a breath of life today. Our God is not dead. He is steady breathing. He is steady breathing, very much alive in Jesus' name. And we have a life in him. We are alive today in him. Again, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord formed man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living soul. The first thing we need to do is to prepare yourself for anything you're doing for the Lord. We must prepare ourselves. He gave us right here how to prepare ourselves. We need to keep breathing continuously from the breath giver, the breath of life, breathe his breath within us. It's the only way you're going to make it through this battle in this life, period. Amen? Can we cut ourselves away from the breath of life? No way. Amen. When he first formed man, the first thing he did was breathe the breath of life. Amen. And see, if you're going to be effective against this battle and to be spiritually strong, we must be breathing and inhaling constant breath from the breath giver. And what is that? That is prayer. Prayer is spiritual breathing. So we're taking our breaths and our oxygen from heaven when we're spending quality time in prayer with the master. 
and we are in, ignited, we are engaged, we are strengthened mightily for being face to face, breathing with the master. Amen. Very effective. We must pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What is the breath of life? What does this breath of life actually mean? The breath of life is, it is the life and power of God given to man to emanate him. And emanate means, the definition term, eminent means, it means breathing. You're conscious. You became a living being. In other words, God breathed God into you. That's why we say you have a mighty, powerful spirit. God breathed God into you. And as long as you keep praying and praying, God's breathing on you, you're sucking that breath of life back into your spirit. Oh, wow, your spirit is eternal. See why your spirit is eternal? For God can never die. God put himself into you. And he will never, never leave you alone. Amen? And that breath is the power of the Holy Spirit. And we must continually pray always. Do you know what God did? And sometimes we don't realize. Adam knew this. When God breathed in him, let, now let me go here. What if we don't do the breath of life? I want to go there really quick here. What if we don't pray? What if we came lack in praying? What if we feel we no longer have the need to pray? What will happen? You'll be non-effective. You'll become spiritually non-existent. You'll be a spiritually dead soldier. Who wants to be spiritually dead soldier in the army of the Lord? No one. Amen. No one wants to be a dead soldier. And see, and here's the thing, too. This is God's main point for staying in the breath of life. We must help others pass from death to life, which is God's main goal, which is the lost souls of this world. You must help those people pass from death to life and bring them over to from the devil's kingdom to God's kingdom. From death to life. And you can only do that with consistency prayer, breathing from the master. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the breath comes from God. It's our soul existence. Really, when you think about it, it's your soul ex existence. It's a extremely important matter. Remember, we are stressing so highly here. We must be have consistency to show God we mean business. We don't want to come in in our personal time, get that breath of life Tuesday, and then we go on about our way and then try to go in and get that breath of life through prayer on Thursday. So many days in past. The enemy is gaining territory when we don't do things consistently. And we learn here that he's patient. He's going to wait and see if you do do skips, skips and gaps. Right? He's watching. Heaven is watching and the devil is watching also. So consistency is very key. And taking this breath of life from God in our prayer is a dialogue. He is expressing to us and having a conversation with us. He's um, revealing things to us. Things on heaven are high and lofty. We must, like the Bible says, my thoughts is higher than your thoughts. As high as heaven from the earth is my thought. So we want to, oh, you're talking about high revelation. You don't want to miss that precious time. Amen. It's things you don't know. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we want to take that breath and do continuous prayer. The Lord is requiring us to do so. Hallelujah. You were created for prayer. Amen. You were created for prayer. You know, God is such an articulate God. On your intimate time with the presence of the Lord, you don't even know all the things God are doing for you. You go in for one thing, he's doing a hundred or a thousand. You going in for one thing, but God is a multiplier in God. Amen? So you're getting one, but he's bringing you out with a bundle. Amen? And each time you go, he's going to refresh your soul. Do we need refreshing times from the Lord? Who needs refreshing times from the Lord? Oh, God, breathe on us, mighty God. 
Refreshing times from the balconies of heaven. Refreshing times will come directly from the Lord and from the Lord only. Amen. Oh, God, we love you when you breathe on us. You know, the Bible says the word, the breath of the Lord is so sweet. It's sweeter than the honeycomb. Why would we not want that? Hallelujah. You know, your person, this is another thing, too. He just reminded me. Do you realize that your intimate time in prayer, which is your spiritual breathing, is the most precious thing on earth? It cannot be compared or even equivalent to anything on this earth. You and the creator of the master of the universe the Lord of lords and the king of kings is choosing to dialogue and conversate with you. You know, it's just amazing. And, you know, we say, oh, God, we don't have time. How many of us know we need to make time for the Lord? Make room for God. We need to make room for God. You know why? Remember, the devil has tormented, abused and kill so many people. We're stopping the tormentor. Say, I'm going to stop the tormentor today through my prayers with God. I'm stopping the tormentor today. Hallelujah. Tormenting people. We know his own goal is to what? To steal and to kill and to destroy. So why would we not want to stop that? You can only do that with the power of God and in his presence. Amen. As I said, nothing could be compared. You know, Jesus told us when we speak to him, we're gaining a stronger spirit. We're gaining life. For the Bible says, Jesus declares in 663, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Say, speak, Lord. For thy servant hears, and here I am, and I am available to you. We're going to do it again. Say, speak, Lord, for thy servant hears, and here I am. I am available to you. The blessings of being available to God will blow your mind. You can't wrap your mind. The Bible says the ear has not heard nor a I sing, right? Nor the things that God got prepared for the people that love him. Say, I'm available. We want the blessings of the Lord. Say, I want to be available. Be available for anybody in China, in Russia, in Africa. If the Lord wakes us up, say, Lord, I'm available for prayer. You never know what the Lord is preventing. He's preventing tragedy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And the devil hates people that pray. He hates prayer, and he hates the people that pray. Amen. And he really hates when they know how to effectively operate in prayer. When they know how to handle prayer and operate in prayer. Oh, he extremely hates that. But the devil is a liar. Tell him, you a liar. And the truth is not in you. Amen. It is not in you. But, Father God, we thank you. One thing we're learning during this precious time, this critical time in God, we're learning to for our prayer. We know that it's going to fight the kingdom when we pray seriously. I know it's not a joking matter. We're praying seriously before God. And then we're taking that seriousness, and then we're going to pray consistently before God. Amen? Then we're going to take those two components and then we're going to pray effectively before the Lord. Amen. We pray in, in those two, the effectiveness is going to be the fruit thereof to get results. Let nothing and no one keep you from your intimate time with the Lord. Amen. Let nothing or no one keep you from your intimate time for the Lord. From the Lord, amen? Because if you do, you will get nothing. 
But Jesus said in John 15, 5, without me, you can do nothing. And nothing is what we will get. If we let people pull us from our intimate, personal time with the Lord, nothing we will get. In fact, we will be gaining territory for the enemy, which we certainly don't want. Amen? We want something from the Lord. We don't want nothing. Amen? The Holy Spirit, say this. Let us stand and make declarations. We're going to make three declarations. Hallelujah. The Bible says you should declare a thing, and it should be established to you. We're going to make a declaration, three of them. Say, Holy Spirit, breathe on me a greater prayer anointing. Say, Holy Spirit, breathe a greater prophetic anointing. Say, Holy Spirit, breathe on me a greater spirit of warfare. Hallelujah. We receive it. Thank the Lord. We need anointings. We need refreshing. We need new breath of God on things. You may be seated. I just wanted to do those three declarations. Hallelujah. We could declare a thing in the Bible say it will be so. You know, because you know why? Deep is calling for deep now. Deep calls to deep. We must pray more than ever before. We must pray without ceasing because the matters of this world is so deep. And God is calling deep to call unto deep in prayer. Amen? We got to go deep in prayer, not surface any more longer. And you know what? Never, ever underestimate the power of prayer. Never. People say, oh, well, I'm just one little soul in many places. I don't even have an anointing of God or a title or anything. It, it doesn't matter. If God just needs your voice to pray and be serious about your prayer, never underestimate your power. You don't need a title, and it's not a gift. We teach that here. Prayer is not a gift. Prayer is something that anybody should be doing. Amen? So never let underestimate the power of your prayer. Amen? God will back up your prayer. Once you pray, you put God automatically standing in front of that situation. So you could be a child, and you say, in the name of Jesus, powerful things will happen. I'll never forget, and I just must say this, I felt led for this. Apostle gave uh, an illustration that I never, ever will forget. This lady was babysitting in Africa. They didn't know that the lady that they had to watch over their child was a witch. So... People went on and left their child, thought they were leaving their, children, their child in good hands, right? Well, the lady was a witch. And so the little child said, in the name of Jesus, and pointed at the woman, the lady was down shaking. She couldn't even move. She was just shaking like this. That little child who didn't even know just said, Jesus, that lady fell flat on the floor and was shaking till the adults came back. She couldn't move against that child. That child only said, the child probably didn't know that she was even a witch. But God used his children. He said, in the name of Jesus, all that child said, that lady hit the ground, pow. So that's why I said, never underestimate the power of your prayer. Amen. Children have moved many mountains in their prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. Children can even move mountains. So how much more than uh, mature adults? Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need to pray, first of all, just for the simple fact that Jesus, who is God, prayed. Right? Just for the simple fact that Jesus, who was God, prayed. Are we greater than the master? No. So we know we must pray automatically. If the master prayed, we say, he said he do the things that he see his father do. Correct? We must do the things that we see Jesus do. It's all in a line and sync in harmony. He do whatever the Father, he see the Almighty God does. And we should do the things that we see Jesus do. Amen. So he prayed. And we must have it in our mind that we must pray. Hallelujah. Let us go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 
7. Hallelujah. Prayer is key in consistent prayer. Say, I will be show God consistency. The Lord will use me because he will see that I'm in my place of prayer. And I'm in that place with consistency. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good. Do you think that the Lord is not going to reward you supernaturally and greatly now and in heaven for not praying for dying people over in Africa and Asia or Ukraine, whoever? The Lord said, if you being evil, talking about the people on the earth, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, right? If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more than the most high God know how to give? So you couldn't be God's giving. Pray for people. Pray for the lost. Pray for your church members. Pray, pray, pray. We're stressing a mandate on prayer. Here we have to. Look at the times. Oh, my God. That alone will speak for itself. Again, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. I'll read again. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and the breath breathed through his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Hallelujah. You know, the most precious thing about this thing, you would notice whenever somebody, and the Lord gave me this too, whenever someone is dead or need resuscitation or reviving, they, the CPR people usually try to pull their hair back to, uh, to unobstruct the airway. They will plug their nose, and they will breathe directly into their mouth, and they start all this, right? But God, that's humanly speaking, but God will do the opposite. God breathed directly in his nostrils on purpose. He could have breathed through his mouth and just quicker to go to the lung area, but he went this way. What did we learn here about our nose? Can anyone re tell me what nose spiritually means? We discern things through our nose, not our ears and our eyes. Our eyes see testimony, right? Our mouth gathers and so feeds. But our nose discernment of what's good and evil. We smell the demonic spirits. We know right from wrong. See, nose smells discernment. So you see why? God is different. He used the nose. So when he breathed into man, so man will fully and forever know and discern and fully understand that this breath of life that I'm breathing you, you must, it must be accompanied in prayer back with me. So it's no misunderstanding. You have full discernment. You understand that what the breath of life is accompanied many things. It's causing you to breathe, become a live living being, but it also is breathing in prayer that your existence from me must still stay in a dialogue back with me. So you forever know this through your discernment. It is sealed. That was before sin, of course, arrived. But he fully understood this with that one breath of life that I must be connected to prayer with the master. Amen? So his lungs and his mind and everything is fully alive unto God. Can you imagine? It's like a mannequin or a dummy or you see like a ventriloquist. Can you imagine that? Of course, God makes things so, you know, that's man's uh, copy of a prototype of a man or a being. Can you imagine God making man from the dust of the ground and then breathing the breath of God. You know, God always existed as the source of all life. They say he is before all things and by him nothing consists. Not demons, no angels, nothing. He made them all. So you see this man he, he uh, made out of the dust of the ground and breathed him. He became, can you imagine his eyes popped open? God. He was alive unto God. And see, that prayer communication will keep you alive unto God. Say, I want to be alive unto you, God. When you're my life source, I cannot live or breathe without you. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, spiritually speaking, if we don't pray, the Bible says we will die. It's a simple fact. You're going to die spiritually, and we know the greater things spiritually is going to last forever. So if I cut off God and my communications with God in prayer, then you know what? We'll eventually we'll backslide, we'll get into our own way, and before you know it, not you even knowing consciously, you didn't slip over into the devil's kingdom. See, that's another thing for prayer. It's a safeguard for you to stay in the things of God. Amen? Say, I want to stay with the Lord, and I must communicate with my master in constant dialogue daily. We say here, you eat every day. We don't miss too many meals, right? <laughs> right? We want to know what's for dinner, right? How can we not want to breathe? Hallelujah. You have to breathe every day, the air that's out here. And you know, so many people, we're blessed. See, God is so good. Many people, he's just giving them the breath, humanly speaking, that they breathe, they out walking around. But we know they're spiritually dead because they have not received the breath of life from the master to save their soul salvation. That's what we have. Now, he's good to all. He makes the sun shine on the just and the unjust and rain on the just and the unjust. But they do not have what you have, and we have to get them that. That's our job to let them know that you're living, but you're the walking dead. No one could live spiritually without accepting the Lord. Amen? And they don't have them. So that's our job. Our job is to save the lost. Amen? So when God breathed life into man, he understood that, hey, this is forever. Adam understood this. When that breath of life comes into you, Acts 17 says, for in him we live and we can move and have our being. See, it's in him. So when he breathed into that man, the first man, it's exactly this scripture, and this scripture is for us. For in him we live, that breath of life is in you, and we can move around. We have our being naturally and spiritually. We know how to maneuver in the things of the spirit. We're taught here how to maneuver in the things of the spirit man, and it is an awesome thing. We fight the devil on the front line. If we hear any one of our family members is ill, if we hear their children are not well, if we hear that someone passed away, oh, we, we go into God and ask the Holy Spirit for the comfort. Then we go into God in warfare. If they're ill, sick, we pray because we know it's the enemy trying to slow us down and slow our brothers and sisters down so we won't have it, amen? So keep praying and keep praying and keep praying. Pray consistently. Pray until, I believe it's a point in prayer that you can have your complete being, your full movement in God. Like we say, there's ways to go. There's levels and levels and different dimensions in the spirits, which we know. But if we keep praying and keep praying, God is going to bring you to levels and heights in God that you never knew before. Amen? God will do that. Then, the more we pray, the more we'll be fit as a vessel for the master's use. You know what? Always ask God for forgiveness. Always. Always ask God to forgive your shortcomings. And let us be quick to forgive. I don't know why the Holy Spirit is touching on that. Let us, because that stagnates your gift. That stagnates your growth in the spirit. That, that stagnates your prayer. The Bible says, leave your gift Quit praying to me, right? Leave your gift right here. Go reconcile with your brother. Then come back and pray to me. That's the word. So in our prayer time, we have to get rid of all also forgiveness. Sometimes we're holding on to things that the people then moved on. You're the only one still holding on that art. Let us forgive today so God can hear our prayers. It's, you know what? 
We want to hear, I like when this came through the house, we want to see stuff in real time, and I'll touch on that, but I'm going to touch on it right now, just a little bit. We want to actually be praying and be able to see this literally, actually, while we pray, and we can see that thing in the spirit that God had moved in our prayer that fast. We want to see it in real time, what we're asking God about. God always works what? Well in advance. We know that, right? So how come he could not show you something in real time? Amen? Your prayers are going to be answered in real time. And people always say when it's a video recording in the, in the uh, people want to establish the credibility of something or they want to say, okay, did this uh, incident actually take place? They'll say, is that in real time or whatever, video time or whatever. So real time matters. It's the actual thing of the event. Amen? So let us go now here. You know, what happens, what happens if you break connection with God? I want to touch back on that. Do you know that the Lord automatically knows? He knows all things. But if you're coming to the Lord constantly in prayer and then you start slowing away, your body will feel it. Your spirit man will feel it. Trust me. Because the thing that um, Adam and Eve did the same thing. The Bible says, this shows you. Let me go here. Let me go here. Let's go to Genesis 3. And I'm going to read from 8 to uh, 10. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. The Lord will instantly know, because he know all things, and you will know too. Because you've been such one with the Lord, your body and your spirit will fill it. The oneness is departing and separating. Okay, let's go to Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the, garden, among the trees in the garden. And the Lord called out Adam and he said, he said, where are you? See? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He called, he hid. He called, he hid. See how quick he knew? See how quick he know? You was once wasn't hiding. And the Lord, as he breathed in you, he established dialogue and consistency with you. This is not the only time the Lord came to fellowship with you. He did this constantly. But today, for some reason, you scared and you hid yourself. You were afraid. The Lord, once he breathed breath in you, kept the prayer dialogue going, visiting you in the garden daily, constantly. But today he comes and you hid yourself. He called, you hid. Why? Because he in himself knew that there was a gap and a breach in prayer. Sin will cause us to have a breach in our prayer. You don't want to go before the Lord like you used to. Amen? Or you have something in the way between you and your God. Let's get rid of everything, every idol, everything, everything. I don't care what it is, human being. Any, you know, you can't even love your children more than the Lord. He says, I must be the prominent. He said, you must love the Lord your God. With all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. And then love neighbors and your people like yourself. See, it's totally two different levels. Totally. He's on a high level. So that's why we said don't let nothing interfere with your walk, with your spiritual life, with the Lord. Amen. So the Lord called, he hid. So that shows you there, there's a breach in their relationship. There's a gap in his prayer life. Amen. And this message is for me and all of us. I'm not just preaching to you guys. Amen. Please don't think that. This is for every born again believer. We must not let anything breach us from our one-to-one -one intimate time with God and put no one above him. Amen. And so the Lord knew. You know, the Lord knows everything. Why would, we, why would the Lord ask him, where are you, when he's fully knowing where he was? He's doing that for you. He wants you to mentally realize and spiritually realize, where are you in prayer? 
Where are you? He knows where you are, but he wants you to realize where you are. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. And by this time, he called him. He hid, made leads, said they were naked. Do you know he didn't even know he was naked before the sin? And if they did, they was not ashamed, the Bible says. You know what? When we pray in a oneness with God, there's a coating over us. There's a glorious, I honestly believe that. And the Bible says he's going to give you robes of diamonds. He's going to transform your body that it'll never die. Amen? So I believe initially there was a glory of God covering over them. And sin said, whoop, then they had to get something natural, a fig leaf. Amen? When you had the glory of God as your covering. Hallelujah. So we don't want, we want to stay in that anointing. By this time, they have known that something was wrong. He knew he was out of his spiritual prayer position and the breath of life from God. He was slowly dying. Because remember, if you get out of that breath, you hid, so you're not with that breath. You're or at the breath over here. So you hid yourself, and now, man, you're slowly dying. Because you cannot get out of the presence of the Lord. Amen. So he was out of his spiritual prayer position. He's no longer breathing freely. And the Lord is asking, where are we? Are we breathing freely, constant in our personal prayer time? Or is our prayer time increasing with the Lord? That's what he's looking for, increase in prayer. Are we rushing to prayer in excitement, knowing that the holy angels of God are waiting for us? That's an awesome thing. You know, we learn here that if you keep praying in the same place at the same time, then heaven and angels will take notice and watch. Correct? You keep doing the same thing, talking consistency, that place will become an altar of the Lord, which is what you really want. Because that's when the angels descend and descend from heaven. Blessings is in that room. Answers is in that room. Provisions is in that room. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, we want to rush. If we don't rush, guess what? We're going to suffocate. We're going to slowly start suffocating spiritually and gasping from air. Moment by moment, slowly dying spiritually, soon to become the human walking dead. The Bible says, the branch cannot exist from the vine. He says, I am the true vine, correct? And he said, my father is the husbandman or over it all. But if the branch disconnects from the vine, right, you're in big trouble. You're withering. You're suffocating. And this is what uh, John 15, 1 through 5 describes. We must stay connected to the vine. He says, I am the true vine, and my father, the almighty God, is the husbandman over the vineyard. Hallelujah. So we're going to stay connected in prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, if anyone loves the Lord, they will pray. If we say we love God, who we have not seen, and he says we hate our, and, and hate our brother, he says, we are a liar. See, the things of God, we have to prove. If we love God, he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And it's a commandment to pray. Amen. So we're going to increase our prayer time with God. Hallelujah. Amen. And we know we'll be greatly rewarded for it. We're going to maintain. Remember, we're going to be in the first position we're going to be in the first group, those who rush into prayer, those are the angels of God, versus this guy, the second example, where he's slowly suffocating. He's being disconnected from the vine. Amen? We're in the first group. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know that your spiritual position helps innumerable people? It creates a so-so. And the Lord had me, I heard this term many, many years ago, and he brought it back to my mind. It's a Greek term called sozo. It's spelled S-O-Z-O, sozo. When you pray, you are creating 
an atmosphere of sozo. And what sozo means is very important. It means salvation, to keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger, from injury or peril, to save suffering one from completely perishing all. Sozo does a lot of things, as you can see. Sozo, prayer will create a sozo for you, and it helps innumerable people. Why should we pray? Let me read the list again, what sozo will do. It, will, it means salvation for people. It keeps one safe and sound. It rescues from danger and injury or peril. It saves suffering ones from perishing off. It stops demonic things from happening. And we already know that it's an all or end time assault launch by the devil of demonic things happening. And it also removes demonic strongholds that already exist. So it prevents things from happening and the things that were already there demonically, it uproots strongholds, sozo. Hallelujah. So pray, because you're creating a sozo for so many people, your loved ones. And, and, and it doesn't matter where they are in the country. You can have a sozo for them. So when Jesus, no one has what sozo do. So when Jesus says, I need an intercessor to wake up in the morning and to pray. And put a sozo across the country, will we say, Lord, here I am. When he asks you to get up and prevent people further destruction and suffering and give them a sozo in China or in Africa or the Ukraine, anywhere, we have to say, Lord, here I am. Be like Samuel, say, Lord, here I am. Say, it's time to pray as never before. It's time to pray as never before. It really is. It really is. Seriously, it really is. When the house, the Lord gave this to the house. It is not for apostle. It is not just for me. It's for the world. We must pray and stand in the gap because they are perishing. You can look at the news. Sometimes the news even becomes something that you just want to turn the channel on. Just flip the channel, because we already know it's gloom and doom. Amen? But that's the state of the condition of the world today. That's why we must pray. And the Lord gave me example. I mean, I can literally see this in my mind. The Lord gave me an illustration, a picture, and I just want to uh, read this to you. I can see it vividly in my mind. Now, we know that the devil has many names, but his one main name is Satan, but then the Bible calls him the prince and power of the air because there's demons in regions, high, lofty ones up in regions, and they come and work in different ranks. But he is the prince and the power of the air of this earth, and he's the God of this world. Amen? So the Lord showed me that the prince in the power of the air is making this environment extremely toxic and dangerous for living. Do you think he's up in the airway doing nothing? Oh, he has launched evils and sins and all kind of things spiritually in the heavenlies, in the airway. He released demonic poison and toxic. And what makes it so bad He's even releasing them naturally. We can hardly breathe without something being discovered in the natural air. So you can imagine what he's doing in the spiritual air. So the Lord said, now he's very busy in both spiritually and naturally, right? Spreading toxic all over, dangerous toxic fumes. And it's trying to choke out human life naturally and spiritually, both. He's got both of the bases covered. But check this out. Because we know the thief just comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We know that. So the real, in real life, he's doing this in dangerous, toxic fumes. But you know what? I've seen this in many, many occasions. When something is launched 
that an oil site or toxic waste, the government officials will call a special team. Well, can anybody just run out there? No. If he be leasing hazardous waste materials, a toxic fumes, you usually see them, a special team, they have a complete white suit and only a window is available for them to see out. That's who you are. <laughs> That's who you are. God wants you through your prayer, doing, he gave me this. You are that. You, your armor and your suit is prayer. See, we teach here, you can't be part of the problem to solve the problem. So you can't, you must have on some gear. You can't be out there with the toxic and say you're going to stop the toxic. You are toxic eliminator. Your prayer will stop many dangerous things that the devil is doing. Amen? You have the suit of prayer. And that's what he showed me. The devil's up there whirling all around, just spinning around fast, dropping stuff all around the globe. Do you know that nobody, there's no place on earth that the coronavirus is not known? There's no place on this planet that the coronavirus is not known. I don't care if the people are in the mountain people. The corona then went up there. Because what? Because he's the god of this air. He's the principality of the power of the air. Everything is under the pressure from this demon, this uh, power of the air. Everything is under pressure. Dropping hazardous stuff in their spirit. And they don't have God to counteract any of that. So without God, that's just eating them alive. Their minds is becoming so warped and demented. Believe me, they are literally just, he's driving people mad. He's dropping thoughts and toxic stuff. They can't think straight. They're committing suicide. They're doing all kind of things because he's dropping this stuff all through the air and on the ground, spiritually and literally. So you are the special task force. See, God needs us to pray. They can't pray for themselves. They are, the enemy already have them bound. They cannot release themselves. So we have our special prater, our special protective covering, and that is prayer. So you know you are the hazard eliminators. Time spent in prayer will give you this automatic protective suit. It was just going to do it. You know, demons cannot even enter. Did you know that? Once you in the holy of holies, and you as you go up into the realm of God, they can't even enter that area. They will have to wait till you get out of that area to even think about doing something to you. They know not to go into that area. They will be annihilated by God. Amen? So when you're fighting against the enemy, your prayer is what it will give you the protection. And guess what? The oxygen that's toxic for them, God is automatically putting the heavenly oxygen in our suit. Because there's no way we would be able to survive to go out there. See, it's dual. It's multi-purpose. If, if the toxic is all out here, right, and the Lord gave me a special white prayer suit. It's kind of like what the astronauts would wear. It came in my mind how he gave it to me. Okay? This thing is covered from top to bottom. It's only that window. So we got to see where we're going. You got to see, like I said, I know where I come from, and I know where I am going. So we got to see in real time the things that we're praying for so we can see God through that window in real time. Amen? So this is our suit, and we're going to wear our suit. Once we, it's just like this. Once we start, stop praying, the suit just somehow just diminish off of us. Once we keep praying, we come back, that suit is on strong. Prayer is that protective suit, trust me. Prayer is that protective suit. Trust me. Prayer is your protection for you and your family. Nehemiah says, fight for your family. Fight for your children. Fight for your wives. Fight for your husband. Fight for your brothers and sisters of the church. And you can only do that. You know, the demons is spiritual. I mean, they have been known to angels be materialized. They can do that. Angels and demons. But basically... 100%ly, 
They are spiritual. They can change form. We know that. But how are we going to fight a spiritual being with our spiritual weapons? Amen? And prayer is your weapon. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So let us keep that in mind. Amen? You know what? We must stop the destruction of the lost. Let us talk quickly about the lost. Do you think God wants us to be saved unto ourselves? No way. The Bible says he wished that none will perish but have everlasting life. So what must we do? We must go out to the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in to the Lord. Amen. Keep praying and praying and praying for the lost souls. Your soul already saved and in the Lamb's book of life. And how great, that's the greatest miracle, is salvation. But we need to go back to the lost, amen, and save them. And for the lost who hear the sound of my voice today, through the airways or whatever communication you may hear, please, please, I beseech you by the mercies of God. Please, please, I beseech you by the living mercies of God that you come back and repent to God, that you change sides, that you come back and give your life to God. Please come to the master. Please come and repent before the Lord and gain eternal life. Amen. And for those in closing who already have him, we're going to go for us who already have him, let us go to 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Is my scripture in closing. Keep breathing the breath of life. Keep breathing the breath of life. For those those of us who have him, let us go to 2 Chronicles 7.14. Father God, I thank you, O breath of life. I thank you, O breath of life. What a privilege and an honor it is to have the breath of the Lord in us. That we no longer dead spiritually. But he says, for you who already have them, you have um, some steps to do. You still have an assignment to do. Amen. We're going through 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Now read. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and pray, and pray again, and pray without ceasing, and pray consistently, If my people and seek my face in prayer and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. See, God keeps us even knowing him in a humble state. He said, you will humble yourself too. Those who have him, who love the Lord. We have to keep ourselves humble. And we must pray. That keeps you humble, prayer. And then he's going to what? He says, you're going to seek my face, and he's going to heal the land. We want them them to have the breath of life today. It's so many walking dead. It's a show called The Walking Dead. But they don't know it's literally spiritually true. They have a show on TV called The Walking Dead, but they don't know in God is so true. There's millions and millions of walking dead. If they die today without this breath of life that I'm, this message is about, they are doomed. Doomed. So they'll be walking dead spiritually. If they don't get the Lord, they'll be walking dead forever spiritually. So that's why it's so important to pray. Pray for the lost. Pray for your love. We, how many people have fam, family members that are not saved? Oh, my goodness, right? That's horrible. <laughs> That's absolutely horrible. And we all do. Do we want our beloved ones to lose out on God and lose eternal life? And don't never experience this breath of life? You must keep praying. Praying will bring them in. Never underestimate the power of your prayer. Let us all stand. That's all I have. We're going to pray. The breath of life today. Amen. Father God, we thank you for the breath of life. Almighty God, 
in the name of Jesus. Let us take some time.